Okay, hi there. In the second of our videos on commonly confused terms, let's spend a few minutes looking at some, some combinations of macro concepts where students often show a degree of confusion. The first pair is economic inactivity and underemployment, two quite important terms in the labour market. So economic activity, inactivity, are those people of working age, but they're not either in work, full-time or part-time, or are they actively seeking work? So they are described as being economically inactive. Typical reasons include having to care for a, a, a relative, um, perhaps they're suffering from a chronic illness, or uh, perhaps staying in full-term education. But also they might be discouraged workers. They've been out of work for such a long period of time that effectively they've given up the active search for work. Now, underemployment uh, are people in work, but not necessarily fully employed. So typically they're willing to supply more hours of their time, more hours of work, than their employers are prepared to offer. So they might be, for example, in a part-time job, they want to work some extra hours, perhaps even think of going full-time, but they can't find a, a, an appropriate opportunity to do so. That would be underemployment. Here's a commonly confused uh, set of combinations, fiscal deficit and the national debt. Well, the fiscal deficit is a flow concept. It's when in a given year, government spending on things like education, defence, healthcare and welfare, is greater than the revenue, the income, they get from direct and indirect taxes. So it's when government spending is greater than taxation. And if you run a deficit, it's usually funded through the issue or the sale of new government debt, also known as bonds. So that's the deficit, whereas the debt, the national debt, is the government's total outstanding debt, and effectively, it's what the government still owes, still has left to repay from the budget deficits accumulated over previous years. Here's another set of com commonly confused terms. Depreciation and devaluation. A currency depreciation is a fall in the external value of one currency against another. So, for example, a fall in the value of the pound against the euro or the US dollar. Um, but it must happen inside a floating exchange rate system, be it free floating or managed floating. <clears throat> Whereas a currency devaluation is also a fall in the external value of a currency, but this time it happens inside a fixed exchange rate system, be it semi-fixed or fully fixed system. Demand-side shock, supply-side shock. Now we know that there are many shocks, external shocks to economics, uh, to economies, uh, which can affect uh, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, real incomes, jobs, and the growth of the economy. So a demand side shock is an external event, it happens outside the economy, on one of the main components of aggregate demand. So for example, a recession in the country of a major trading partner might lead to a fall in the value of exports of goods and services sold overseas. That would be a demand side shock. A supply side shock is either an inflation shock or a shock to potential output. Uh, they're, they're both known as adverse aggregate supply shocks. And typically they cause an inward shift of short run aggregate supply, causing an increase in inflation and a fall in real output. So in the current moment, we see, for example, an increase in the price of world gas and oil and copper and wheat. All of those could be seen as supply-side shocks, although they're also demand-side shocks for the exporting nations concerned. Fixed exchange rate and managed exchange rate. Again, a commonly confused term. A fixed exchange rate is one that's pegged, it's anchored, it's fixed against other major currencies. So, for example, the Saudi real might be fixed against the US dollar, the Hong Kong uh, dollar might be fixed against the US dollar, and critically, for example, the Danish, Danish krona is fixed against the euro. So some countries go for a fixed exchange rate system, and governments and central banks have to intervene to maintain that fixed exchange rate, often by intervention in the currency markets. Whereas a managed exchange rate is a floating exchange rate, 
day to day, the value of a currency finds its own market level. But occasionally, the central banks, the monetary authorities will intervene in order to resist fluctuations in the exchange rate that they consider to be undesirable. So a managed exchange rate happens, occurs within a floating exchange rate system. Deflation and disinflation. Deflation and disinflation, two commonly confused terms. Deflation is a persistent fall in the general price level of goods and services, shown by a negative rate of inflation. Countries that have experienced deflation in recent times include Switzerland, Japan, uh, Greece and some other nations. Effectively, the internal value of money goes up in a time of deflation since the general price level is falling. Whereas disinflation is a fall in the rate of inflation, uh, for example, from 5% to, let's say, 2%. But that's not enough to bring about deflation. You see, if inflation falls from 5% to 2%, over time, year on year, prices are still going up, albeit at a slower, uh, more moderate pace. So there we go. That's a little quick journey through some key commonly confused terms in your macro. And I hope you found that useful. <laughs>